الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواده ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كما أرسلنا فيكم رسولا منكم يتلو عليكم آياتنا ويزكيكم ويعلمكم الكتاب والحكمة ويعلمكم ما لم تكونوا تعلمون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون صدق الله العظيم I mentioned in the previous sessions that there are four things we have to take care of, we have to make sure of correcting these four things in order for us to be doing the type of deeds that are required in our deen that will get us the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first and the foremost and the most important one is ikhlas and we talked about ikhlas briefly in our previous session. The second thing that we have to make sure of is ilm. That whatever we are doing, we are doing it with having a proper knowledge of how to do it. We are not basing all of our effort and work on assumptions on opinions as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةِ from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell people that this is my way this deen, this is my way أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةِ I invite people to the deen of Allah with full knowledge, with certainty that I'm certain that this is the right way. Ala basira. And not only me, ana wa man ittaba'ani. Me and my followers, this is our way that whenever we invite people, we do it with full knowledge. So whatever we do, we do it with full knowledge regarding that topic, regarding that subject. Unfortunately, as we will see in the hadith, we are living at a time when no one wants to learn. Everyone wants to do something, but no one wants to learn. People want to do ibadah, but they don't want to learn the way of doing the ibadah. People want to do all kind of work of deen, but they don't want to learn the deen itself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asked to say in Quran, أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةِ I invite towards Allah with full knowledge. And now everyone that wants to do any work of deen with full ignorance, full jahala, doesn't, he wants to make sure that he doesn't learn anything about it. And in every field, you know, there are so many masajid, so many organizations, so much different type of work is being done these days. The way people running the masjid, everyone wants to be in the board of the masjid. They like to be the, become the president of the masjid, but they never want to learn how to run the masjid, what are the adab of the masjid. People like to run organizations, all kind of organizations. They have good intention, but end up doing so much work that just destroys the effort that they're supposed to do. They want to do the work of deen. And for the work of deen, they end up having type of gatherings where there is music, there is mixing, there is everything on the name of deen. 
You know, amazing. How could a person who wants to invite people to the way of Allah and the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be doing something like that? But everyone just wants to do something; they don't want to learn it. We want to work for Deen; we don't want to learn our own Deen. This is a, a great problem these days. This is a big problem these days. To the extent that people who are doing salah all the time like us, and we don't want to learn even the way of doing the salah. You go into the masjid, no one knows why they're doing whatever they're doing, they don't know why they're doing it. Someone says, put our feet together and everyone's feet together. Someone says, no, not together, apart from each other, and now everyone's pulling his feet. Someone says, I mean loud, and everyone, okay, I mean. Someone says, no, no, don't say it loud, and okay, we won't say it at all. They don't know why they're doing it, they don't know what they're doing. You see someone one day, the person is tying hand over here, the second day he goes up this way, the third day he's tying hand on his neck. Why? He doesn't know it himself. Someone said this, the other person said that, the third person said this. Four days someone is going to tell him, no, don't even tie, just keep them down, he will keep them down too. No one knows what's happening. There is no knowledge at all. Just get it here and there, wherever you get it from. I like this one, I'll, I'll go for this one. When it comes to following Deen, believe me, you look into the situation of the Masajid in our situation, it's just from here and there, that's it. Why are you doing it? People didn't learn the method of Salah, they didn't learn the method of any of their ibadah. They don't know about anything, never learned Deen. Ask anyone, which book did you study about the Deen? They won't even be able to name the simplest book. If we just ask ourselves, is there any book that I really learned regarding my deen, regarding the basics of my deen? Which book that I, did I study? And it will be difficult to name a book. We don't know which book we are following. We don't know which book is trustworthy. We don't know which book to uh, really depend on. Go a step beyond this. If you have a problem with related to your deen, who do you ask? People don't know who do that. I get it from the internet, I go from these two websites, I, wherever. The ilm of deen is just gone. And as I said, the very disturbing part of it, or very the thing that really hurts, that the, mainly the, the, the ones who are doing the work of deen, they don't want to learn the deen. In any field of deen you will see it. People who are running the organization, at least, at least, the type of work that you are doing, you should have good information about this field of work. You should have information related to this field, at least, if not all other things. But they didn't even have time to learn this thing. And as soon as they see a person who, we may call him a scholar of deen, ulama of deen, no, Stay away from these people. Stay away from the ulama, stay away from the scholars. Because these people will misguide you. They will take you away from these things that you're doing. They will tell you pictures are not allowed. They will tell you this thing is not allowed. They will make everything haram for you. So stay away from them. You keep on doing the work of deen. And what work of deen? What will be deen? What is deen if we didn't learn our deen? What are we inviting people to? What are we going to teach people once they will come? In so many situations. I happen to be there where they told us that we will be inviting Muslims, non-Muslims. And now everyone that is doing that work, Imams and whoever you would name the person and everyone is shaking hand with women. They tell them, why are you doing this? This is, don't you know this is haram? Yeah, we know, but, you know, at least we don't want them to, we don't want to insult them at this time. You don't want, you, you don't want to turn them away. You want them to come. Okay? 
now this lady, that this woman that you're shaking hand with is going to take shahada. She says, okay, I'm ready to take shahada. And after shahada, salam alaikum, you say, no, I'm not, it's haram in Islam. And she will tell you, why did you shake hand with me before? Weren't you Muslim before? Why did you cheat me at that time? I thought this was allowed, this is why I came. And we're cheating people with this Islam. This is not my deen, this is not anyone's deen. This is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We bring it straight forward that this is allowed, this is not allowed. It's not that, okay, go ahead, drink. We will give you alcohol, we will give you all kind of these muharramat for you to drink. Just come into Islam and after they become Muslim, now if you drink, eat your lashes. We cannot do the work of deen without learning deen. This is the bottom line. We cannot be practicing deen without learning the deen. Even practice it. How can we practice it without learning it? A person says, I would like to be a physician, I'm going to treat everyone here. But did you learn? No, I don't have time to learn. But I'll treat all of you people here. He wants to treat everyone. But he doesn't want to learn it himself. How is he going to treat people? How is he going to know about medicine? How is he going to know about these type of diseases that people have if he did not learn this field? And same way, we want to do everything in our deen, but without learning it. Which book did you study about this field? I didn't have time. Who is a scholar that you asked regarding this field and that you sat with and then you, have, may you, have, you may have learned the method of doing this type of work or practicing this type of ibadah? No, I didn't have time to do this. I just do whatever I see people doing. And this is really the basis of our deen. Majority of the people, and not 90%, really more than 99%. It's more than 99% of the people that are doing any type of work of deen or practicing deen themselves. It's just from here says they have not learned the deen properly. And this is why, really, I mean, sometimes when we get questions, you find a person who have been doing Salah for years and years, and after answering this question, the next question would be, then do I have to repeat the Salah of last 20 years? Because the way he was doing the Salah was not the right way. They are making such major mistakes in Salah, where the Salah is invalid. Has to do the Sajda Sahu, never did Sajda Sahu, he thought this was not something important. So you tell him, no, for these type of mistakes you will have to do Sajda Sahu, at least if you make it unintentional, if you do it intentionally, then your Salah is not accepted. And he says, this is how I have been doing Salah for, for, for the whole of my life. What should I do now? Should I repeat all of these prayers? I think I mentioned this earlier that I was at a situation where I, I was invited to do the nikah. And after the nikah, the father asked questions, something related to nikah, because he saw the way we did the nikah. And he finds out that the method that did his nikah was not acceptable according to the sharia, was the wrong method according to the sharia. So we had to redo the nikah of the father. His son is getting married. And at that time, we did, we did after doing the nikah of his, of his son, then we did the nikah of, the, of his parents. Total ignorance of our deen. There is no ilm at all. And no, I don't mean ilm to become alim, to become a scholar. Just general information about things that we are practicing, we are not learning even these simple things. They're very simple, they don't take long time. It's not a matter of spending years and years in a school. Yes, we should have done that when we were children, but that never happened. Unfortunately, there are most of the people, their parents never sent them to a type of school where they would learn the basics, the basics of deen, where they would just learn the fara'id of salah, the sunnah of salah, 
the fara'id of wudu, the fara'id of ghusl, children getting to the age of puberty, and until five, six years later, they didn't know what is ghusl, and what is the method of doing the proper ghusl, how ghusl becomes fard, and they're not taking shower, they're not taking ghusl. And they're doing salah, five years, six years, many of them even longer than this. They didn't know that also became formed by this. <coughs> this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, that out of the signs of the Qiyamah, يَقِلَّ الْعِلْمُ وَيَكْثُرُ الْجَهْلِ There will be very little knowledge and abundance of ignorance, ignorance everywhere. And what can be more ignorance when we see that not only those who are not, who don't care about deen, now even those who are, who, who according to our understanding are very caring and they really like deen, they like to practice it, they like to work for it, and they don't want to learn deen. They don't want to learn even the basics of deen. You tell them to sit, no, they don't have time to learn. I want to do the work, but I don't have time to learn. And of course, the ignorant person will only be spreading more ignorance. He's not going to spread knowledge. You can't expect help from ignorance for ignorant person. So ignorance is being spread. And people are just inviting each other towards ignorance, towards jihad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Qur'an, the ayah that I recited at the beginning, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ We sent a messenger to you, who recite my verses to you, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا This Prophet of Allah, this Messenger of Allah, recite my verses to you. وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ He purifies you. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And He teaches you the Book of Allah. He teaches you the wisdom through the Ahadith. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ And He teaches you things that you had no knowledge about. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing. Yatlu alaykum ayatina. He was reciting, reciting the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, to the ummah. Wa yuzakikum. And he was purifying us. He was purifying the ummah. Wa yu'allimukum al kitab. And he was teaching us the meaning of the book. He was teaching us the wisdom, the hadith. Wa yu'allimukum ma lam takulu ta'alamun. And he was teaching us things that we had no knowledge about. But when did we learn these things? When did me, me and you learn these things from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Of course, when he is not there. Al-ulama'u wa rasatul anbiya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us before he left the world. He made all of this arrangement for us. It's not that he left us in ignorance, in darkness. That if I die then, I'm certain, sorry. It's too bad for you people who would come after. No. Al-ulama'u wa rasatul anbiya. This hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. That the scholars are the inheritors of Anbiya alayhim salatu wa salam. If you don't see me, come and see the ulama of the ummah. Just like a woman came and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about something. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, come after some time. He said, come after a year or two and come and talk to me when you come next time. She said, Ya Rasulullah, what about is if you are not there? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, then come and talk to Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr was assigned in that position by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I'm not here, then come and talk to Abu Bakr. Same thing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, me and you, that if you don't see me, then al-ulama'u wa rathatul anbiya, go to the ulama of the ummah and be with them, learn the deen from them. And when was the last time that we really sat with ulama to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who is our teacher in this deen of Allah? 
Whichever field of life we specialize in, we know who our teachers are in that field. A person who is becoming a lawyer, he knows whose teachers are in that field. A person who is becoming a dentist, he knows whose teachers, who his teachers are in that field. A person who is becoming a doctor, he knows whose teachers his teachers are and which school he attends for this field. What are the schools of our deen? What are the, who are the teachers of our deen? Who did we learn our deen from? I learned it from the street. Children playing, they were talking about it and I learned it from them. We don't have teachers of deen. We have teachers in every field, but no teachers of deen. If today, if a person would ask us simple things about Sharia, new Muslim would ask us simple things about Islam and where to refer to, I don't know. And I don't know the books that you can refer to, and I don't know who the people that you can trust. Ignorance, total ignorance. Leave people in darkness. We are in darkness, we will keep them in darkness too. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was teaching people things that he didn't know. He teaches you what you don't know. Did we learn these things from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam everything and everything in detail. As we know, some Sahaba Ridwan, uh, some, uh, some Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam were, were approached by the Kuffar with this objection. لَقَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيُّكُمْ كُلَّ شَيْنَ حَتَّى الْخِرَأَةِ He teaches you everything, even how to use the bathroom. They thought, this is an objection against deen, but really this is the beauty of it. That he teaches us everything. But the question for me and you, did we really learn these things from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did we learn the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in another hadith, إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ كَالْوَالِدِي أُعَلِّمُكُمْ I am to you people like a father. I teach you everything. Imagine when he's saying these words, his uncle, Al-Abbas radiallahu anhu, who is older than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was also part of the ummah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching. There are older people. There are people that are in their old age, much older than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and still, he is telling all of them, إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ كَالْوَالِدِ To all of you people, I am like a father. I teach you everything. Which simply means that everything, everything that we do, we need to learn it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just like a father teaches his children. This is how we need to learn everything from our deen. From the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah of Quran al-Kareem, وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمُ Allah sent down the book and wisdom to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمُ and Allah taught you things that you didn't know. Now look at that ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that your responsibility, in fact he's telling us that I sent a prophet to you, يُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ He teaches you things that you didn't know and where is he getting these things from? وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah is teaching you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, things that you didn't have knowledge about. So Allah is teaching Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the ummah. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari. إِنَّمَا أَنَا قَاسِمٌ وَاللَّهُ يُعْطِينَ I'm distributing this knowledge to you people. I'm distributing the knowledge. إِنَّمَا أَنَا قَاسِمٌ I'm distributing the knowledge. وَاللَّهُ يُعْطِينَ And Allah is the one who will give you the knowledge. So it is from Allah. It came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah gave me the responsibility to distribute this knowledge to you. 
So our responsibility is to take our share from this knowledge that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has distributed to the ummah. I don't know really what to say regarding related to this topic because when we look at our situation, many of us we have not even spent time to even correct Surah Al Fatiha. Just to make sure that I'm reciting Surah Al Fatiha correctly. And especially when you are in a town like this. Say if people of this town are reciting Qur'an incorrectly in their salah. Is this something that is acceptable really being in this town where, mashallah, you have a place where there are more than 100 huffas. And then there is a person who is reciting Qur'an incorrectly. What this person is going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about why, is he, why, why was he reciting it wrong? What excuse? What reason? Is, could there be any reason more than he didn't care about deen, about this Fatiha, about Quran and about how he recites it? What could be a more reason than this? That I really didn't care. Otherwise, if a person really cared, SubhanAllah, everything is available. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the doors of all of this alm. But no, no one wants to learn it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is to teach us the lesson. He says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make this dua. Subhanallah. He's asking Rasulullah to make this dua. وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Say, oh Allah, increase my knowledge. Increase my knowledge. O oh Muhammad, keep on making this dua, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Keep on making this dua, that Ya Allah, increase my knowledge. Did we really, at any time, did we really make this dua, with intending to make this dua, that Ya Allah, really, I need to increase my knowledge. Ya Allah, give me more knowledge of deen. Rabbi zidni ilma. There are so many ayahs in Qur'an al-Kareem, but let's look at, have a quick look at some of the ahadith. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, The example of this hidayah and ilm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me with, and how people are going to be treating this ilm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I will explain this to you through an example, and that is, when there is a rain, there is three type of land. One is a type of land that takes all the water from the rain. It takes the rain water, and the water, is, the land is soft, the water gets into the land, and then this land will bring out all kind of growth for people. So there is vegetable, there are fruits, there are all kind of things that will benefit people. This land took in the water of rain, and now it starts giving people all kind of beneficial things. Things that people can benefit from. There is another type of land, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, it's a very solid and a hard, hard land. The water does not go in it, but it's a type of land, it's designed in such a way that water stays over there. So the water will not get into it, it will not bring out anything for people, but at least it will save the water for people. So whenever people need water, they can come and take some water from there. This is the second type of land. The third type of land, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, is a land that is a barren land, hard land, but it's just straight land where the water doesn't get in it, does not bring out any fruit or any vegetable for people, and at the same time does not hold the water for people. So this land is not of any use in this situation. 
It does not hold the water. It not, does not take the water in it to bring out any fruit or any growth for people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, similarly, there will be three kinds of people when it comes to the ilm that I am leaving behind. Number one, those who will take this knowledge, who will take the Qur'an, who will take the hadith, and then they will drive the masail from it. People will go, who can go to them, and they get all kind of fruits, vegetables from them, which means can get the answers to their masail from them. I made this mistake in my salah, the person will answer it in the light of Qur'an and hadith, because this is the person who learned it. He's not just giving that water. He's not just giving the wordings of Qur'an and hadith. He is giving us the fruit, the vegetable, the growth that came out of it. He is giving, giving us all of that, which means driving the rules and masail and giving us the answers according to our questions, according to our need. This is, this is the first type of, first group of people. The second group of people, as Rasulullah sallallahu says, is the land that does not have the ability of taking this water in it and bringing out something better. But at least this land holds the water. Which means those people who make this knowledge available to others. They are not the type of people that can really drive rulings from it. But they hold the knowledge. They are making knowledge available to others. SubhanAllah, what a beautiful example. If Rasulullah would have just given the example of and said it straightforward that there are people who will learn, they won't understand, but they will teach it to others, it will be limited to this, this only. But he says there will be people who will hold the knowledge, make the knowledge available to others, but they themselves, they don't know all the details of it. They can drive rules from it. But at least they are making the knowledge available to others. And we can see now, subhanAllah, there are so many different ways nowadays of making knowledge available to people. Someone comes and asks us a question. I don't know the answer, but here I have a good book related to this topic. Read this book. You made knowledge available to this person. You held the knowledge and now you made it available to the person. We have so many of our scholars, ulama, who used to have bookstores. They used to sell, sell Islamic books. And the purpose was, I'm not able to help people in this field. All I can do is at least make the knowledge available to them. So let them read. The purpose was not to make profit out of it. Their purpose was so that this knowledge becomes available to people. SubhanAllah, another way of making knowledge available to others. So these are the people who are making knowledge available to people. They, are, they hold the knowledge. They preserve the knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are playing, playing their role in preserving the knowledge. The third type of people are those where the rain comes but doesn't stay there. That land is not benefiting from the rain itself and is not even holding the rain for others. Is not holding no water for others. And those are the people who don't benefit from the Qur'an and Hadith, from the knowledge of deen themselves, and they are not even holding the knowledge for others. They don't want to learn, and they don't want to even teach others. They don't want to make this knowledge available to others. And in fact, in many cases, you would see people, on the name of deen, they will make sure people won't learn deen. They will do it on the name of deen, they will make sure that people won't learn deen. Don't go to this masjid because these people are bad. Don't ask the ulama because ulama are bad. Don't go and learn because if you learn then you won't, uh, we know we don't do this haram things that we are asking you to do. So it's better that he doesn't learn. Don't read anything, don't study anything, just do what I'm telling you to do. Trying to keep people away from the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ilm of the deen of Allah. And all of this is happening in the name of deen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, there are people that are totally useless to this deen. Those are the people who don't benefit themselves from the knowledge, they don't learn it, they don't take it to bring something better. They are not even preserving the ilm for others. 
And this is of course, imagine when these useless people, the people who are considered useless are those who are not even preserving the knowledge to be pro to provide it for others. Imagine when the situation is go goes even a step further than this, and that is when people say, don't even learn it. Don't even learn it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our deen, protect our deen, and always keep us on Surat al mustaqim These are the fitnas of the time. This is really, this is a big fitna of this time. Ignorance and don't learn, don't even let people learn. Don't even allow people to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one of the ahadith, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ When Allah intends to get something good from a person, when Allah wants something good from a person, Allah gives that person the understanding of deen. This alm of deen is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something good from this person. Now this person is learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hadith is in Sunan al-Tirmazi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us the sign of a mu'min. He says, the mu'min, لَنْ يَشْبَعُ الْمُؤْمِنُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَسْمَعَهُ Mu'min will never be satisfied from learning his deen until حَتَّى يَكُونَ مُنْتَهَاهُ الْجَنَّةِ until he will enter the jannah. Which means the sign of mu'min, that this mu'min likes to hear about deen, likes to learn more and more about deen, and he will keep on learning more and more until he will enter the jannah. Which means until his death. He will learn, he will keep on learning, he will be in the process of learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is another hadith in Sunan Ibn Majah, narrated by Abu Zar radiallahu anhu, who says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, Ya Abu Zar, O Abu Zar, if you go to learn one ayah of Qur'an, Every day if you go in the morning, you go to the masjid to learn an ayah of Qur'an is better than performing hundred raka'ah nafil prayers. You learn one ayah of Qur'an is better than performing hundred raka'ah of nafil prayers. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَلَأَن تَغْدُوَ فَتَعَلَّمَ بَابًا مِّنَ الْعِلْمِ عُمِلَ بِهِ أَوْ لَمْ يُعْمَلْ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَن تُصَلِّيَ أَلْفَ رَكَعَةً and if you go and learn one chapter of the knowledge of deen, masail of the knowledge of deen, one chapter of the knowledge of deen is better than performing thousand raka'ah nafil prayers. And part of the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Umila bihi awlam yu'man. Whether that thing can be practiced or not, doesn't mean if you don't practice it, means for example, you learn the ruling about tayammum, and you may never do tayammum in your life. But learning the rulings about the Imam, about one chapter of deen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, is better than performing 1,000 rak'ah of prayers. In another hadith, which is also in Sunan ibn Majah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who come to this masjid, for the purpose of learning or teaching, that person is just like a person who is doing jihad fi sabirillah. His reward and the reward of a mujahid are seen. And there are many hadiths in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have compared the reward of a person who is learning deen or teaching deen and the ulama of the deen with the reward of a mujahid. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nada'u al-mawazin al-ghist when the uh, scales for the justice will be replaced over there, Allah is going to weigh the blood of the shuhada with the ink of the ulama. And the hadith says, the ink of the ulama, by the, through which they wrote the alam of deen, will overweigh the blood of the shuhada. That will be heavier than the blood of shuhada. And in this hadith of the Madha, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a person who goes to the masjid, for learning deen or teaching deen, any of the two purposes, learning or teaching. 
This, purpose, this person is just like Mujahid fi Sabilillah. وَمَنْ جَاءَ لِغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ فَهُوَ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الرَّجُلِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَى مَتَعِ غَيْرِهِ And a person who does not come to learn or teach, he just come to the masjid, of course, not with the intention of salah, this is for any other intention, other than, of course, learning and, deening, uh, and teaching, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that person is just like a person who goes out to the store, just to look at other people's things. He doesn't want to buy anything. He's not, he doesn't even have no money in his pocket. But he's just going to see how many different type of things people own. How many type of cars are there? What is he going to get by seeing that? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, a person who come to the masjid does not learn or teach. He's just looking at people, other people's wealth. He doesn't have nothing for his own, for himself. Talking about the reward of learning and teaching, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in another hadith which is in Sunan al-Tabrani, and authentic hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a person who would go to the masjid with the purpose of learning and teaching, كَانَ لَهُ كَأَجْرِ حَجٍ تَامْ مَنْ حَجَّتُهُ كَأَجْرِ حَجٍ تَامْ مَنْ حَجَّتُهُ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he would get the reward of a person who have done a hajj, perfect in a complete hajj. Came with the intention of learning or teaching. Not just teaching, learning or teaching. He is getting the reward of a complete hajj. Look at the reward of learning and teaching the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much reward is there? And in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting, and this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with a group of Sahaba radwanullahi alayhi wa jma'een. And he is, of course, when he's sitting, he's teaching them. Three people came into the masjid. One person came after doing the two rak'ah salah. This person came and sat at the end of the gathering. He came and joined the gathering. He sat at the end of the gathering. Second person, after finishing his salah, he came and he saw an opening somewhere in the middle towards the front. He came and sat over there. The third person, he did his two rak'ah salah and he left the masjid. After that majlis of ilm, that gathering was over, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you see these three people that came into the masjid, one of them sat at the end, the other person found a space and he sat over there, and the third person who left, the example of these people, these three people, uh, the first person who came and sat at the end, amma hada fastahiya fastahiya allahu minhu. He was shy, so Allah is shy of him. What does it mean? This person came with the purpose of learning. And he was shy to jump over people. He just sat at the end of the gathering, humbleness. Allah is shy of him means that when this person is shy, he's asking and he's shy. So Allah gave him, you know when, when someone asks you, says, can you give me uh, your pen? You don't like to give it, but you're shy to say no. So you just give it to the person. Someone says, can I get a ride with you? Are you going home? Yes. Can I get a ride with you? And really you are in a hurry, but you're shy to say no. So okay brother, I'll give you a ride. So you know, shyness means you give him what he wants. So this person was shy and Allah was shy of him means gave him what he wanted. This person got what he wanted. The second person, this person came and he was looking room. He was seeking refuge towards Allah and Allah gave him refuge, which means he was looking for a place and he looked for a place in the front, he found an open space, he went over there, he got a place over there, Allah gave him a refuge, which means gave him place in his deen. And the third person, he turned away and Allah turned his face away from him. The third person didn't want to sit and learn. He turned away from the alm of Allah, from the gathering of the alm, Allah turned his face away from him. He didn't get anything. Learning and teaching, it's extremely important. And we really, really, we have to spend time learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, we will just keep on doing things according to our opinions, according to just things that we heard from here and there. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about, in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about majority of the people, إِن يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ 
they just follow their opinions and they are just saying on their own they don't know they don't know what they're doing they're just saying things on their own may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to learn the deen of allah there are so many hadith so many ayahs, so many hadiths, of course, our time doesn't allow us. This was only so that at least we realize the importance of learning and teaching. And we realize that although we have been practicing it for so many years, but we need to really learn it. We need to learn it. We can't just continue being this way. We need to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we won't learn it, we may not be doing the right way. As I said, four things are needed in order for us to be able to do the work properly and do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we really want to do it for the sake of Allah, we have to fulfill these four conditions. Number one, ikhlas. Number two, ilm. And inshallah, we will talk the other two, about the other two things in our future sessions. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa lisa'ibu muslimin wa muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah.